Now let's try a repeated measures analysis when we have between subject factors in our data set. Now up to now we've been working with standard factorial designs. So those are those designs where we have factors completely crossed. So measurements are taken for every combination of factor levels. Now when we worked with exclusively within subject factors, we had a within subject factorial. So each subject rated each combination of the within subject factors. Now when we have between subject factors, subjects are only measured at one level of those factors. So this is actually a different type of design with respect to the between subject factor, and it's called a nested design. So factors A and B are said to be nested if particular levels of B occur only with one level of A. And the way we write this is B is nested inside of A. Now we're going to look through some general examples of nesting, but in our context, since we have subject as a factor, we're going to say that subjects, that is B, is nested inside of A, the between subject effect. So I would say that subjects are nested inside of gender, because a subject will only occur at one level of gender. Now more generally, nested designs come up a lot in research. So for instance, in a teaching efficacy study, we could have a situation where we have schools, let's say factor A, and those schools are represented in different cities, so Atlanta, Chicago, and San Francisco. Suppose we have six instructors, our factor B. Now one way we could run this study is have each of these six instructors crossed with school. So we'd have to fly each of these instructors to the different cities, have them teach in a classroom, and measure some kind of outcome. Now, that would be expensive and very difficult to do. It would be weird to drop instructors into different schools and have them teach. Now, what we normally do is measure instructors nested inside of schools. That is, each instructor already teaches at one of these schools, so that's where we'll measure them. So instructors 1 and 2 will be measured in Atlanta. Instructors 3 and 4 will be measured in Chicago. And instructors 5 and 6 will be measured in San Francisco. So we would say that instructor is nested inside of schools for this analysis. Now with respect to the way we'll be doing nesting, since subject is a part of our model, we'll have subjects nested inside of any of the between subject factors. That's simply how we talk about them. And that's what it is to be a between subject effect. So again, when subjects are treated as a factor, which is what we do for our repeated measures designs, and factor A is a between subjects factor, we'll say that subjects are nested inside of factor A. Now, this terminology is important to know, but we won't have to change anything for how we set up these models in Jump. The add-in will take care of the nesting for us, but it will enter into some of the notation, and so I want you to be aware of this terminology. All right, so let's imagine a study like this. We have subjects, here we have six of them, and we'll have more in our actual data set. And let's imagine we're measuring them on different responses to advertisements. And so we'll have a between subject factor in this particular study. That is, we'll know whether subjects are experts or novices in the subject area. So some of our subjects, 1, 2, and 3 in this table, are experts, and 4, 5, and 6 will be novices. So the notation we'll add to the row effect will be a little subscript in parentheses J. Now the way you should read this off is subjects are nested in just one level of J that is one level of the alpha or factor A. And again, that's just to say that subjects are nested inside of experience. That is, when they come to our study, they're either experts or novices. We're not gonna measure the same subject once as an expert and again as a novice. We just can't do that. Now, we'll have another factor in this study, and this will be a study looking at the effect of who is endorsing a product on the ratings people make of advertisements. And so we'll have another factor within subject that is endorser. So subjects will make ratings sometimes when we have a celebrity endorser in the advertisement. So those will be measurements for each subject. And we'll have the same subjects make ratings of different ads when there are unknown endorsers, so people they don't know endorsing a product. And so we'll have subjects make ratings of these advertisements. But I want you to notice that these factors, endorser and expertise, are different. So endorser is a within subject factor. Subjects will make multiple ratings across that factor, sometimes celebrities and sometimes of unknown endorsers. But expertise is really only one measurement for each subject. Subjects are nested inside of expertise. So that is a between subject factor. So here's how our data set will look. It's the ads to between by two within data set. And I want you to notice that, again, we have multiple rows for each subject. 
So each subject will give us two ratings, once when they rate an ad for a celebrity or with a celebrity in the ad, and once when they rate an ad with an unknown person. But notice for expertise, subject one here has the exact same value. That's because subject one could only exist at that one value. And so expertise is a between subject factor. And the way you enter that in the data set is just to have the same value for subject one in both of the rows. That subject isn't changing with respect to that factor because it is a between subject factor. So let's see how we'll set this up and jump. And I hope you'll see that not much will change as far as how we proceed once we have the model designed and run.